Welcome, my friends, to Shaking the Salt with Dr. Peppers. My bio reads from troubled teen to teacher of the year, 100 pound weight loss, blah, blah, blah. You know the sort of thing you're working on in your before and after life story. So at the end of the message, stay tuned if you want to contact me for any reason, including prayers. Thank you. And I'm Dr. Peppers, Shaking the Salt. Here we go. My poor husband didn't know what a prankster he was getting when he married me. Well, I guess he did, because the very first April Fool's joke that I ever played on Bud was way back in the 60s, early 70s, when the draft was still in session. Yes, the draft for Vietnam. And that is the last thing any college guy wanted to hear, especially back then, that they had been drafted. But poor Bud opened his mailbox down at the student union one day. I was with him, and he had an official letter on stationery from the university explaining that, unfortunately, his grades, his time, whatever it was, he was in ROTC, was forwarding him to be drafted. And I had gotten a hold of that stationery. I had written the letter and I had placed it in his mailbox since I knew his combination by then. And that was the first April Fool's joke I can remember playing on my poor husband. I just am a fun prankster, love it. I like to have things played on me as well. As you know, for those of you who saw Bud when he got me back with the giant rat the mechanical rat from America's Funniest Home Video. At least I never put any of his on film, except maybe one or two because I knew they were going to be so good. I had our accountant back in St. Louis play a wonderful joke on him one time where he told him that he was $10,000 in arrears and that he needed to pay this tax money or he could be put in jail. And (laughs) poor Bud, oh my goodness. And Jim Saylor, thank you for being such a good sport with that. I've had his car stolen. There was a body, which was a mannequin in the swimming pool floating one morning. I had one of my former students confront him about a former girlfriend of his back in Alabama, this great big six foot four guy. And he said, Daddy, and all of the secretaries at Bud's work and a couple of the chemists were there as well. Well, this time, we've had some trouble with credit fraud. Credit fraud on your credit card is something you never want. You don't want to get that phone call that says, uh, did you just spend $10,000 at the Marriott in New York? No, would have liked to, but haven't been there lately. And so we've been in and out of the banks, even had to change banks, all kinds of trouble with credit cards. So unfortunately, I was able to get a hold of our new bank stationery and write a formal note to him that now that he had changed banks and everything seemed to be great, unfortunately, the credit card was being frozen. This time it was on our ministry. And for without further notice, there was not going to be any way he could use his account. Well, poor Bud was headed to the phone. He was getting ready to call and he just could. And then I said, you know, this is the first of the month. He said, yeah, this is, oh no, April fools. I'm going to kill you. How many times has he said that? Through the years, I've had a lot of pranks played on me. I've had a lot of fun playing pranks. But, you know, there's one scripture in the Bible that says we are fools for Christ. What does that mean? Well, I had to do a little bit of research, and it is found in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 4. And this just shows that those who have come to Christ are, often appear as fools because how can you be happy and content in the midst of trials and tragedies? And how can you not worry about what you're going to eat or drink or if people admire you or not? When you truly know your purpose and your reason for even being here on this earth, 
There is nothing that can persuade you or anybody else to do anything differently because you have found the source of your joy, your peace, your contentment. And that is because once we were lost and we were miserable and we might have enjoyed the drinking and the drugging and the smoking and the token for a while, but nothing compares to the joy that is found in being high on God. And that's where we look like fools. People say, oh, that is just ridiculous. What are you even talking about? You're a fanatic. You're one of those freaks. Well, call me what you want. That's what Paul was saying here, because he said, I will rejoice knowing that what I am doing and what I have is for all of eternity. This isn't something temporary. This isn't an April Fool's prank. This is the greatest truth that has ever been known. But the wise are dumbfounded. Those in high power don't get it. Those who seemingly have all of the things of this earth really have absolutely nothing compared to the joy and the peace and all of the fruits of the Spirit you get when you become a Christian. So if I'm going to be a fool, I might as well go ahead and enjoy my time here on earth, play a few pranks, love a few people deeply, have a lot of friends, glory in all of the opportunities I have to share with my friends and family, the joy of Christ. But I admit it. I am a fool for Christ. I do things, say things, step out in boldness at times when everybody else says, what are you doing? And it doesn't bother me anymore. It used to. I used to be afraid and ashamed, and I didn't want to talk to people about Jesus. Nobody wants to hear that J word. And certainly as an educator and as one in the higher academia of life, getting my master's and doctorate in things of this secular world, you can't talk about Jesus. No. Well, as the people of old used to say, if I'm going to be a fool, I'm going to be a fool for Christ because he picked me up out of the gutter of my life. He turned me around and set my feet on solid ground. And for him, I will ever be true. Even if I look foolish, even if it doesn't mean anything in this world, it means everything for all of eternity. So my question for you is, not if you're going to play an April Fool's prank or if you had one played on you, but are you willing to risk everything, to look ridiculous, to be a fool for Christ? Because there are lives at stake. We are in such days, my friend, there's not time left to be anything but a fool for him. God, I pray for my brothers and sisters listening that they will indeed step out in faith, even at times looking a little bit foolish, to tell others the good news. Look what we have. Look why we have joy. Look why we have this abundant life that Christ promised and tell them the good news that they can have it too, that it's so simple even a child understands and gets it. But it's so hard that those in the kingdom of the Pharisees and the Sadducees and those in the world of academia today and those who have all of the prestige of the word today don't get it. They just don't get it. But we do. And that's why they call us fools. I pray that for you, my friend. I pray that for myself and I'm not going to play any more pranks. It's time to tell the truth, at least until next year. And then I'll get my poor butt again somehow. God bless you, my friends, my family. And may you have a very blessed, wonderful April Fool's Week. Because if you're like me, you are a fool for Christ. I'm Dr. Pepper shaking the salt. Thank you, God, for shining your light. Thanks for staying on, my friend. If you would like to contact me, visit saltandlightministry.com. If you want to share your story with me, ask a question, have me come speak to your group, or maybe just request prayer. 
Once again, saltandlightministry.com. Thanks and God bless.